First of all, can I uh, welcome the fact that this discussion uh, on a just transition uh, is taking place here today and can I thank the Green Party for tabling their piece of legislation to facilitate it. Um, but I think it is important that any discussion about just transition is based on reality um, because the failure to recognise the basic reality of the climate issues and their impact uh, on the ground and the failure to constructively engage with communities has in large part undermined our ability to date in actually driving forward the type of change that is needed to bring about the transition to meet uh, our climate targets. And there has been uh, a serious failure on behalf of those advocating for climate change to come up with the innovative solutions to reflect the unique challenges uh, that we have uh, here in Ireland. And there is a responsibility not just to highlight the problems but to come up with real and practical solutions that can be applied in communities across this country. More often than not, uh, they've tabled ideas that are just a copy and paste of solutions from other jurisdictions which fail to reflect the reality uh, on the ground in Ireland. And this has led to the alienation uh, of whole sectors uh, of uh, society and communities across this country. And that's why, as Minister, I established the Climate Action Fund to actually incentivise innovation here in Ireland to come forward with solutions to address the Irish challenges and not just copy and paste. If it's done some other parts of the world, it can apply here. One very practical example uh, is in the whole area of carbon tax and transportation. It is important that any model does not disproportionately hit those living in rural or regional parts of the country who are so reliant on diesel and who were encouraged to take up the fuel through government incentives. As an alternative, the government has the opportunity with the current review of the National Car Test Operator to revise the testing regime to provide an actual emissions profile for each individual vehicle. It would thus uh, treat those people living in rural areas, driving longer distances more fairly, as these vehicles would have lower a lower emissions profile than a similar vehicle driving on congested city streets. Such a measure would encourage the retrofitting of diesel vehicles, including uh, retrofitting to alternative fuels, and support of the conversion of the fleet over time to petrol hybrids and to electric vehicles as most motorists would see the direct benefit in the rate of motor tax based on the actual emissions profile of their vehicle. On the other hand, it would not disproportionately hit the haulage industry or agricultural sectors who are so reliant on diesel as a fuel. This would act as a very effective congestion charge as those vehicles driving on congested streets or during uh, times of heavy traffic would, pay a much, would have a much higher emissions profile and thus pay uh, higher uh, motor tax. But will we see that happen? That's the type of thing that we need uh, to be looking at in reality here that applies uh, global issues and apply them in local practical terms. We also need to look at the perverse policy that the IDA has in this country of forcing more jobs into the city of Dublin, leading to further demands for construction in terms of office accommodation and housing accommodation, instead of utilising the infrastructure that has already been developed and paid for by the taxpayer uh, in our regions. And that includes the need to provide high-speed broadband investment to every single townland and community across this country, spreading economic growth across the regions and not just compounding the problem that we've already seen in the City of Dublin. 